ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Retro Warriors episode 359. Woo. As always, I'm your host, Justin Baker, and as always, I'm joined by resident old bastard, Chris Saturn. As always. There's the notes. Uh, we don't really have any housekeeping uh, <laughs> this week. Uh, things are kind of getting back to normal-ish. Yeah. Uh, this is, this Mostly is um, normal. This is kind of the end of our weird, truncated, sped up, slowed down, just in vacation schedule. It's mostly. Um, so I feel like after this, it'll be normal for exactly two weeks, and then I'm on vacation for another week. Oh, good. Yeah, but it's not a record week. Oh, so then who the hell cares? It's fine. Yeah, that's right? That's your problem, not mine. It's fine. <laughs> that's, that's a you problem. Right. Um, my week, mm-hmm. I've been playing the video games. Um, what? I, I, I picked up Kenshi, which is, man, it, it's one of those games that's in kind of that Dwarf Fortress category. N- not anything really to do with how it plays. It's, it's just the incomprehensible like, category. E- <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That category of games that have like overwhelmingly positive reviews and you look at them and you're like, I, I don't even know what the fuck I'm looking at. Right. How, and you're like, surely once I get in there, it'll make sense. And you get in there and you're like. None of this makes any fucking sense. And then you go online and you're like, why does this not make any sense? And everyone's like, I know it's great, right? And you're like, what? <laughs> uh, you know, that very much that dwarf fortress. Yeah, that know, is not get, for me is what I have learned. Where you, where you, I, well, I, what I figured out is I just really like, um, like I, I, I like it when my play, well, well one. Tedious confusion, I, is that the thing you like? <laughs> I, I live in a state of tedious confusion, <laughs> so. I mean, my God, um, I, I, for one, I, I, I like, you like it then I like games with emergent, uh, gameplay and emergent right. storytelling and, and games like, uh, Dwarf Fortress and, and Rim World and stuff and, mm-hmm. and Kinshi are really good with this emergent storytelling, right? Um, this, it's also why I liked Breath of the Wild so much, very much emergent storytelling. You're creating these fun, interesting scenarios by playing with the physics and tools available to you within the game world. I like right. that. Fair. You know, and it's not so much that I'm after a physics sandbox or whatever, as much as I'm just after something where I can kind of create my own sort of narrative, you know, um, and I enjoy that. Um, Kinshi is very much one of those games. It plays like if I were to describe it, I would say it's kind of a cross between an RTS and a CRPG. See, when you described it to me the other day, you said it was basically the antithesis of everything I look for in a game. Yeah. So, uh, RTS game crossed with a uh, uh, CRPG. I like some RTSs. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it, it, it the interface very much is just like an RTS. Like you build okay. squads and stuff. You can you can interact with it just like an RTS. All right. Um, and you can have different starts. And so. But but the thing is, you can add is the, dozens of people to your like little squad, mm-hmm. and then you start creating other squads. So I have one game where I literally just I started as five people, mm-hmm. and we went out into the wilderness, and we we like started foraging, and we built a little mini city, mm-hmm. and we were trading with the city next to us because we were rich with copper, and they were rich with literally everything that wasn't copper. <laughs> And it's just like this kind of like city building RTS. And then my other game, I'm one guy who is like Elder Scrolls style stealing my way across the countryside. (laughs) Right. Basically the same game. Yeah, pretty much. Um, And it's just it's 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 what I like about it is is, you know, one, it's very much a lot of emergent uh, storytelling, emergent gameplay. Um, And two, the world feels like this very weird kind of like cross between like the weirder parts of Morrowind and like, I don't know, Dune. It's it's very like bleak, hmm. weird sci-fi, but not like sci-fi sci-fi, like fantasy sci-fi kind of vibe to it hmm. that I find really compelling. Um, I don't know that I'd recommend it t- to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> if if you, if if Kenshi is the kind of game you like. Then at some point while I was speaking incomprehensibly for the last three or four minutes, you went, I want that. And you know who you are. And if you didn't feel that, don't, don't, just don't. <laughs> but it's very like, one, so my one save, I'm literally playing it like a CRPG. I'm save scumming. I'm creeping around town. I wait to, every night. So every day I've got these people that I've hired and I go out and we mine and we sell our ore. And it's like this survival crafting thing. We've bought a house in town. And then at night I just go rob every store. (laughs) 
of everything. And then the next day, I'll go spend my morning running to the next town over and selling all their shit. Okay. And then coming back and then mining some more. It's just very weird, you know. Um, and in my RTS game, the people next door to me are like this weird race of like ant-like alien creatures that live in a hive. I was waiting who... for you to say that they keep selling you shit that they stole from their neighbors. <laughs> They might be, um, and 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 we we have no combat prowess, any of my people. So what I do is I kite enemies into their civilization, yeah. let them kill it, skin it, sell them the skins, and buy food. Um, and apparently they find it socially it, it is insulting for you to enter a store and not barter with them. So every time I go to the town, if I don't talk to their shopkeep. Yeah. He comes sprinting out of his <laughs> shop full speed, hurling insults at me <laughs> and threatening to have me arrested until I, I trade with him. Weird. And he doesn't even care if you buy something. You just have to like look at his wares and then he's all right, good day. Like, and then he goes back <laughs> in his little ant hive thing. <laughs> so it's just a weird game of weird shit that controls weird and is incomprehensible and strange. And, and That does sound like your kind of I, thing. <laughs> I like that feeling. I like that feeling of being in a situation that is that just feels really totally foreign, right? Yeah. I mean, obviously not in real life. That's terrifying. <laughs> but, but like, you know, the idea of, like, being in a game world in this strange alien world and the actual systems in the game, the way I inter- interact with the game is strange and alien and different. That to, For me, that adds to the experience. It's, for, it's, like, for, it's like the Darmok language of, of gameplay. Yeah, basically that. Yeah. Um, For normal people, they're like, no, I want to understand what the fuck I'm doing. Right. And if that's you, then don't play Kenshi. Um, I I also have kind of picked up Final Fantasy Legend 3. I've been playing it on my deck. Um, And just because we were talking about it today in the Discord. And man, just that's still just a fun game. It's it's also kind of weird and incomprehensible. That's true. Uh, yeah. In its own kind of JRPG way. Yeah, the whole saga Um, series is just kind of weird and incomprehensible, to be honest. Yeah, and so honestly, I'm 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 kind of shocked I have not returned to it as an adult because I had Final Fantasy Legend three as a kid. It was the only mm-hmm. Final Fantasy I owned, <laughs> and so I th- the same way I thought Mega Man X is what Mega Man was. Yeah. Final Fantasy Legend three was what I thought Final Fantasy was. That's, uh, and you can imagine weird. how confused I was when everyone was going on about this game called Final Fantasy seven, and I was like, yeah, the one where you like eat meat that you cut out of an enemy and you turn into like a witch, <laughs> and they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, no, I have that on my Game Boy, my Game Boy Pocket. I've played that one. It's a fun game, man. If 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 you if you if you if you like JRPGs, but you're kind of sick of them being so kind of by this by the book, you know, uh, it's weird. It's it real weird. weird. Um, <laughs> the thing that the thing that always eventually turns me away from the Saga series every time I start playing one is just the fact that I can't grind. That kills me. I got to be able um, to grind. I, I've been grinding in Legend Three. Yeah, but you don't gain experience. I've, I've been gaining levels. Well, you gain stats. I mean, I've just been getting levels. I'm level seven. Oh, maybe level Legend yeah. Three does have levels. Most of them you don't might, have you, that. Uh, you might be thinking of the romancing saga games. Also, Although, no, the, the earlier saga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you're yeah. right. You're right. You're right. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not. I'm not familiar enough with the saga games. This is the only one I've ever played. Um, that might be the only one with levels. Now that I'm trying to think about it interesting i also could see it upsetting you because you're you're very much the the optimal path yes. person and there is no optimal party right. configuration in the, no. the, 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 the this, this game very much seems like i don't know fucking figure out what works and for oh, me yeah. i'm like that's great i love that there's not a right answer and i don't have yeah. to worry about having the right answer and you're like i need a fucking answer right. to my I, question someone please give me the correct scantron so that i can scan it into my <laughs> robot brain yeah yeah, so I, I could see that being a little bit of, of a turnoff for you. Anyway, what have you been playing that's um, hopefully not weird and incomprehensible? <laughs> no, not really. It's uh, mostly revisiting stuff. I went back to uh, to Undertale just because I needed something to play uh, on my yes. Xbox because I had run out of stuff to play that I was particularly interested in at the moment, and I still needed to get my daily achievement. So I was like, I need something with really easy achievements that I can just rush through, and mm-hmm. that was Undertale, and... Um, it's still Undertale. It's the exact same game that it was before. They did change mm-hmm. one thing on each console, apparently. It's kind of shocking to me that there's not been more, as big as Undertale was. Well, there's uh, mean, Deltarune, the sequel game. Yeah, but I, I feel like that, I don't know. I, it's I, I been just pretty feel slow like, coming. Yeah, 
Um, uh, it, like, is it out of early access yet, or is it still? Well, there's two chapters available now. I think maybe. Three. Oh, I didn't know they were doing episodic. I thought yeah, it was yeah. just like a early access. No, thing. no, they, anyway. they're doing episodes anyway. Uh, but no, yeah. so um, they they have changed something on each console for Undertale, and in, in the PS4 version, when it first came out, they added this extra area so that they could have achievements because the original game didn't have achievements. And so there was just a, uh, a box with a picture of a dog on it that you could put money in. And if you put in <laughs> enough money, it would give you an achievement. Yeah. And you just kept putting in more money till you get all the achievements. You did it. Yeah, pretty much. And, uh, <laughs> and then in the switch version that wasn't there because there are no achievements. So it was just right. a, an empty room full of clutter from the old PS4 version that was destroyed. And, uh, and then in the Xbox version, they replaced that with a uh, casino that serves the same purpose. It's uh, just a single slot machine. You keep hitting the button until you get all the achievements. Isn't that just exactly what your Saturn brain wants? Kind of. Where you can just Some walk days. up and mash the A button and achievements yeah. pop up. And a little like, bit. I, I'm fulfilled. To the point <laughs> to where I had to like stop myself. Like Each time I would get one... I'd be like, I could just keep doing this and get more cheap, or I should save one for tomorrow. There. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I, I, I kept saving like in that room, and then the next day I would just load it up and hit the A button a few more times until I got an achievement, and then I would save yeah. it and turn it off. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, it's it's still a fun game. It's it's. Uh, I will say this. It has the best 5.1 surround sound that I've experienced yet out of my Series X. <laughs> Undertale? Yep. All right then. Don't know why, but it does. Uh, better than than all the Yakuza's. Better than the 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 Final Fantasies that I've played on it. Better than Dragon Quest XI. Uh, I'm trying to think of other uh, uh, control might be pretty close, but because Undertale has more music, I could hear it more. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, I also am trying to revisit uh, Dragon Quest IX for the first time since it came out. Oh boy, I love Dragon Quest IX. That was my second Dragon Quest. It's good. It's uh, it's a good game. Uh, the the reason I haven't revisited it since then is because it's only on DS and yeah, and I'm not a huge handheld person, and it's been so um, obtrusive to try to emulate DS because it mm -hmm. is a two screen system, and I don't have stacked monitors anywhere, and I don't have a portrait mode monitor anywhere. Um, so I, uh, I finally just gave up and started playing it on my TV and I tried playing around with different RetroArch configurations as far as the screens. And at first I did, uh, the, the, the main screen as big and the other screen as little. And then yeah. the first time that there was a, uh, cinematic sequence, uh, the top <laughs> half of the screen it stretches, was, yeah, it? it's teeny tiny right. over there in the corner. Um, so that didn't work. So uh, then I you, tried. Have to... you tried? Because uh, Citra does it this way. You mm -hmm. can map a hot key to flip through mm -hmm. the different. So so you know, like you play, and then whenever you hit a cutscene, you flip to that configuration of like stacked or whatever. So I I found that there's a button you can hit to flip which screen is prominent, but not uh -huh. like flip between them. Uh, between like orientations. Between different... Yeah, exactly. Uh, I did find there was an orientation where it shows both screens on the side, but then ballooned up one of the screens as most of the screen. And I tried mm -hmm. that for a while, and then the other screen was just too tiny to be useless. Yeah. So uh, eventually just gave up and did stacked screens in the middle of my screen with giant black bars. Yeah. And it's fine. I mean, the game is still good, at least. I'm so. <laughs> I'm waiting for the like DS ROM hacking community to kind of like bust open some way mm -hmm. of I, I don't even know what they would do, right. but like some kind of general uh, standard operating practices for games that really necessitate two screens stacked on top of each other. Right. I, I feel like eventually somebody's just going to have to either mod the game to to squish everything into one screen or port it elsewhere uh, in yep. order to make it a, a single screen game but i wonder if i could get like a little raspberry pi one of those little raspberry pi touch screens mm -hmm. and like velcro it to the bottom of my deck <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean like i wonder if, surely i mean the answer is yes i could make it work right the the, the question is how long would it take right, right? Um, but I just had that thought where I was like, I could just make my own. <laughs> I own three DSs. Yeah. And three 3DSs. Yeah. For a total of nine DSs. <laughs> and and I... Uh, I uh, just the still... three 3DSs is nine DS. Right. Well, there's... Okay, yeah. So you have 12 yeah, DS so all together. I have 12, I have 12 DS. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to open them all and duct tape them all together. 
It's kind of shocking that DQ9 didn't at least get a remake on the 3DS. It's yeah, just kind of yeah, weird. Or, or on, on mobile when the first eight games got ports to mobile. Yup. Um, so it's, uh, it's strange, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, let's do the news. Uh-huh. First up, Metagravity Studio minted NFTs of Abandonware games before realizing that they didn't have the rights to the games. What? Some of the games weren't abandoned. What? And they weren't legally allowed to sell them in any form. Huh. The NFTs now redirect to passes for their upcoming blockchain-based video games. Yeah. Uh, and my favorite part is some of those games were like stuff from uh, Blizzard. Yeah. You know, like these mm-hmm. aren't like companies you've never heard of. These were right. like games i don't think anyone owns lost vikings now it's just right we could just use it that was one of them Uh, also blackthorn uh, was one of them you know things that have been released within the last two years yeah um it's this is a thing that maybe people don't realize um when you buy an nft mm -hmm. very often you're not the the blockchain doesn't actually contain the image that you've purchased or the product or whatever it is it contains a redirect to an address where that thing is theoretically permanently hosted right so in this instance what happened is they sold these nfts and then they just changed Mm -hmm. what that redirected to to basically an ad for their shit yeah, it, oh. it's a, apparently going to be um, some in-game currency or whatever in their dumb bullshit upcoming game. That's so, stupid. So people that thought they were buying old PC games that you can download for free anywhere were in fact buying uh, some currency for a game no one will play. A 30-year-old clip from Game Pro TV shows an early build of Mega Man X featuring a Maverick that was never used in the game. It looks really neat. Yeah, I really hope that a uh, prototype or beta build of the game comes up somewhere Surfaces, sometime. Yeah, just so that we can see what some of this shit was. I love seeing kind of, the pre-release versions. Uh, when that kind of stuff happens, my first mm-hmm. hope is that we already have like a beta build somewhere, and people just hadn't dug into it because you know they they get these things in big giant piles a lot of the right. time. Um, but I've not seen I, anything. Well, like I looked that through uh, uh, some of the websites that like archive all of the different beta versions, and I didn't yeah. see any Mega Man X betas that weren't practically identical to the retail. Uh, Square Enix elaborates further on their upcoming NFT and blockchain business. Will mostly focus on mobile games and smaller games for now. Yeah, I can see. The amount of times I have to talk about the blockchain <laughs> on our retro gaming <laughs> podcast. <laughs> the fuck is happening the worst part is that last one was actually about retro games yeah it's frustrating yeah activision blizzard lost 63 million monthly active users mostly in call of duty games we haven't had a call of duty did they was there a call of duty last year fuck if i know was it was there one this year i've literally never played a call of duty game i don't know why you're asking me (laughs) Saturn, tell me, tell me, tell me. <laughs> I feel like we, it's been wasn't a minute. Wasn't there the free to play Call of Duty get some expansion or something? Oh yeah, year? Warzone, Warfield, no, War, 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 World at War, sure. something like that. War something. Uh, Warcraft. Warcraft. Call of Duty Warcraft. <laughs> uh, indie devs started a Kickstarter campaign to create a horror game for the Pokemon Mini. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'd play it. Their give previous me, give me a Pokemon Mini and I will play this game. Damn it! Their previous game was also weird. It was like it was like a horror game on the VMU or like <laughs> something like that. I don't remember what it was, but it was some weird, weird little tiny thing like you know this. What? I want weird horror games. Give me more of that. Yeah, I'm down. Uh, Sony won't add first party new releases to PlayStation Plus because they would deteriorate. the The games would deteriorate. Apparently, I, I they break down. Into their uh, into their base elements anytime that they are putting a subscription. Service. I read the quote, and what it seemed like they were trying to say mm-hmm. is that putting their first party titles at launch them on PlayStation Plus would would devalue them. Yeah, right. I, and I think they're trying to throw shade at, at Microsoft and be like, "Oh, well, their games aren't worth shit anymore now." That they're what on their frustrates me service. is there is legitimate shade to be thrown oh, at yeah. Microsoft right. for their first party titles releasing day one on Game Pass. For yeah. example, Halo. F- Halo came out. Mm-hmm. There was no co op. Right. There was a multiplayer battle pass. Right. You know, there are there are issues of yeah. this kind of like pseudo free to play nature of some big. Microsoft stuff, Forza Horizon 5 comes out day one, and there's like an, there's extra packs and DLC and all this stuff, right. you know. I see if it's had a, a similar issue. Instead, they just seem to be implying that 
the value people get from a game is not within the game play experience. It is the amount of money they spent on it that gives them a perceived value, which is fucking stupid. Well, it's Um, it's because they're not blocky when you spend Oh, yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. They're less blocky. (laughs) Uh, new PlayStation Plus tiers launched in Southeast Asia. PS1 and PSP games support CRT filters, rewind, save states, trophies, and online play. That's all good. First party games and some third party games are presented in the PAL mode instead of NTSC U or J. That's not good. Choosing Pixel Perfect mode presents a squished image, even for the PSP games that should be running in 16 by 9 That's the weirdest one. Games are natively rendered at higher resolutions than 1080p, but textures only get a basic upscale. The CRT filters mask it to a degree, but they're not perfect. Mm. And at launch, customers who bought a P- PS Plus at a discount were told they would have to pay back the difference in price before they could purchase an upgrade, mm. which Sony later reversed and claimed it was a technical error i don't i don't know if it's condescending to mm-hmm. say that the things your customer service people were telling right customers is a technical error yeah um, I, I don't believe it for even a second because not yeah. only was customer support telling people but the actual store interface on the playstation updated the prices for each customer based on their previous discount so it yeah it, somebody programmed that explicitly to do that what it feels like is Sony got pissy because mm-hmm. here's the thing. And this ties, this goes hand in hand with the statement they made previously mm-hmm. um, earlier in the news, which, which is they were probably upset that people got discounted PlayStation Plus because right. now PlayStation Plus was being devalued. Yeah. Sony seems to care a whole lot about maintaining perceived value right yeah. now. Well, they want to be um, the Apple of video games. I, well, they need to fucking. God, just I'm not even going to get into it. <laughs> um, and then the, I could see them being like, hey, people bought PlayStation Plus at this extreme discount, mm-hmm. you know, because there's always those deals like around Black Friday yeah. and Christmas. People are like, yeah, if you buy 10 years of PlayStation Plus, you can get it for 100 bucks or, you right. know, whatever crazy, th- you yeah, know, yeah. coupon stacking people figured out that right. year. Um, and I could see a Sony exec, the same Sony exec that's like, well, we don't want to devalue our games that you want to play right. by making you not pay lots of extra money for them, being upset that people got a discount. And they're like, well, hey, if they're going to get the new thing, they should have to pay the difference. Yeah, that's, I can that's definitely so, see that. so petty. <laughs> that's just so petty. Did you yeah. did you watch the um uh, uh, breakdown? I think Digital Foundry did a breakdown that shows. I didn't watch it. No. Oh, man. The. the <laughs> The, the perfect pixel mode on the PSP game is my favorite part because it doesn't just shrink it to four by three. It shrinks it to like three by three. Like it's, <laughs> it's tiny, man. It's so thin and it's especially jarring for a PSP game because those are yeah. widescreen and uh, I'm. The whole thing just seems bizarre. And and the fact that it's running PAL games, which means they're running at 25 frames a second yeah, on a console that doesn't support 25 frames a second is just very strange. Very, very strange. Now, I my guess as to why they chose the PAL games, both here and for the PlayStation Classic when they did that, is because those PAL games usually have multiple language options for Europe. Mm-hmm. And they didn't want to have to release the same game twice for europe and other regions so just well that would be work and they didn't they didn't want to do that exactly and that's just so lazy yeah um let's get in the topic at hand this week we're talking am2r yes also known as another metroid 2 remake which is the metroid that nintendo would really rather you just kind of forgot (laughs) maybe go play other m don't ask (laughs) us about this one yeah we've we've gotten rid of it Uh, other m2r Oh God! <laughs> uh, this was released August sixth, twenty sixteen, on Metroid's thirtieth anniversary. Yeah. Developed by Milton Guasti, G- Guasti I I mean, is how I'm is saying correct. it. Yeah. AKA Doctor M sixty four, which is what we will say because it's easier to say. <laughs> yes. Uh, originally available for Windows, later officially ported to well, officially unofficially ported to Linux and Android, with unofficial ports on Vita, Switch, maybe other places. We don't know. You decide. <laughs> I thought the Linux and Android ports, uh, uh, or at least the compiler tool for them, were released by him. And then the others were done by others, but I could be wrong on that. Yeah, like so many other um, community-led projects. Uh, it starts it's, to it get e- murky. 
you get in the weeds pretty yeah. quick on who did what where. Uh, as far as first encounters, I I um I heard of this mm-hmm. when I heard about the, the takedown. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, when when Nintendo issued their DMCA, and I went and downloaded it because there's no better publicity for a project <laughs> than a company. Any literally any time a company's like, oh yeah, we're gonna take down this fan project, I immediately go download it. <laughs> Um, and I won't care about it at all until then. <laughs> and I, I got it and I played like 10 minutes of it and I was like, yep, cool. And then I just back burnered it and forgot about it. <laughs> uh, and then a couple weeks ago I was like, Hey, what about that Metroid game? And then here we are. Yeah. You know, uh, we had already started doing this show when that happened. Yeah. That was, uh, yeah. just, uh, almost six years ago now. Um, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> Oh, and yeah, I, I had tried it just before the takedown because they had made the big announcement the day it came out and yeah. there was a huge uh, uh, ta-da about it because it was good. And so I was like, oh, I should, I should go ahead and download that. And then the next day was the takedown, the day after it was uh, announced. And so I, uh, I I had it already, so I, I played a bit of it and I was like, oh, it's good, but it's, it's pretty tough. I'll come back to it and then promptly uh, put it off for six years. Yeah. So for people that maybe uh because well i notice it um whenever these fan projects get shut down Mm -hmm. occasionally it happened a lot with it with the mario 64 pc Mm -hmm. port the second it gets taken down people show up in our server like hey does anyone (laughs) have this they're like searching for it the answer is no we don't the answer is no we won't distribute that to you (laughs) right (laughs) right (laughs) um but uh like in my experience as soon as you hear about it getting taken down hit reddit because there's tons of links still there because they haven't gotten around to getting that shit down yet and you just grab it off of mega or whatever um but uh tell me about the development of am2r so this is uh what i could find anyway um so uh the developer dr m64 uh he said it was developed over a 10 year period (laughs) oh man and the goal unsurprisingly was to remake metroid 2 Uh, with more modern gameplay akin to Metroid Zero Mission. And Mm -hmm. as a reminder, when this came out, we had not gotten a 2D Metroid game since Zero Mission. Yeah. Uh, This was was during the dark period. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so... Uh, he he said that he didn't consider himself a programmer, and he learned Game Maker as he went along, just trying mm-hmm. to make this project. I didn't realize this was a Game Maker project. Yeah, yeah. I'm perpetually I've used I've developed in Game Maker before. Yeah, but it was like ten years ago, <laughs> oh, well, and it was a ten years was, ago. He was working on this. It was yeah, I guess so. And it was not not. Uh, I, I'm I'm shocked at the projects coming out of Game Maker. Is all yeah. I'm gonna say. I think they, Undertale they're, was they're, made in Game Maker as well. A lot of stuff. I was playing something. Oh god, what was it? I talked about it on the show, and it like comes up, and it's like made in Game Maker, and it, it's the second it comes up, I'm always like, oh, here we go. And I played it, and I was like, this is really fucking good. <laughs> right. Um. Anyway, continue. Yeah. So um. Uh, he he wanted to give the game uh, some kind of style of its own, so he he remade the soundtrack. He said in his spare time, while uh-huh. uh, accepting pixel art from from some missions from volunteer volunteers, and uh, and if you haven't played uh, the game at all yet, the soundtrack is excellent and the graphics oh, are so excellent. So uh, he and the other volunteers did just a phenomenal job there. Um, he did release some demos in late uh, in late 2011 as well as early 2013, which did get more attention from more artists who continued to contribute to the pro- project, which is uh, how it ended up in such a, a clean state. And uh, and because the game has a larger play field than the Game Boy version, since it's presented at I, I want to say 720p uh, mm-hmm. versus uh, the the Game Boy's uh, what is it 160p on a Game yeah, Boy. Yeah, although I notice less widescreen than a game boy it's okay. a little more it's a little more boxy well then a game boy advance you mean yeah game boy advance pardon yeah, me because yeah. <laughs> the original in, game in my head I, in, in my yeah in my head i'm comparing it to, to zero because after i played aim 2 i went and played zero mission mm-hmm. just to to refresh myself and uh i i i it, it's it's slightly less uh less widescreen than that's, than the gba aspect ratio that's weird because the the game boy advance is not as widescreen as a widescreen tv and it fully filled my television weird maybe it had some weird aspect ratio on or yeah, something maybe. or it was it was cropped weird or something yeah. um 
But yeah, so so because of that, they they did change several areas and several enemy encounters and everything to accommodate the the newer presentation style, uh, <laughs> as well as changing several of the uh, enemies and attack patterns in order to accommodate uh, new weapons and tools that are in there that we'll we'll get to later. Yeah, um, and I, I played through the whole thing on uh, my Steam Deck uh, uh, in nice. its entirety. And looked great on there, ran great on there. I just yeah. ran the Windows executable. I didn't even bother with the, the Linux version or whatever. I just ran it in Proton. Nice. And uh uh which I guess gets us into presentation. Um, but man, it looks good. It's, oh, yeah. It looks real good. Oh yeah. That's the 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 graphics and the sound I would say were were absolutely the the highlight. Um not that the the game is bad by any means, but the the presentation yeah. is just top stellar. Notch. Um, and th they have different like filtering options. You can turn on like Game Boy, and, and I think there's a, like uh, three or four different other filtering options that you can turn on for it that make it you know look like uh, puke if you if you <laughs> if you really want it to just all be green. Maybe, if that's if you what you wanted into. to shit all over your game. Um, but uh, uh, graphically, it's spot on. Everything oh, looks yeah. really good. Yeah, um, it, it just the, looks like a slightly uh, higher def. Uh, slightly higher quality uh, version of Zero Mission with a higher yeah. frame rate, which it is does great. Very occasionally, um, get that kind of um, God, I don't even know how to describe it. Uh, that's you in, in like lower tier game maker games. You see it a lot. It's that kind of flash animation y mm -hmm. look to it. Yeah, I can. Uh, um, there are some times where certain graphics don't seem to mesh right with others, and so you get that yeah. kind of floaty animation style and and very rarely i mean yeah. ve there was only two or three times where i'd be like oh that looks a little fan gamey and then in my head i'd be like justin it is a fan game and like, oh yeah <laughs> right um the soundtrack is outstanding yeah uh, a lot I mean, of remix tracks right. uh, from from super metroid um and uh and some re and mostly remix tracks from metroid 2 obviously since that's the game yeah. i've been walking around all week humming tunes from this game which i don't do um very very well done soundtrack very much i assume the soundtrack is available on youtube it, i mean it's got to be i assume yeah um for the love of god go listen to it it's great um Tell me about the release, and then we will get into the game itself proper. Yeah, so there was a, a countdown timer uh, posted prior to the game's release on August 6th. And uh, and as soon as the game was released, he did announce that there would be some new features added, some fixes that he just detected at the last minute. And, of course, that's when the DMCA notice showed up uh, yeah. the day after release. So, so the game was uh, Im immediately officially removed from distribution. Uh, but since then, fans have added a, a lot to the game, uh, adding new game modes, fixing bugs, uh, just little contributions here and there. Um, uh, and and also uh, those ports, like we mentioned earlier, to other platforms. So Yeah, and I know uh, 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 Dr. M64, we, I believe, went on to work in, the, like, someone hired him, didn't yes. they? Yes, yes. Uh, I, I have that later on in the notes in the legacy right, we'll area, but he, yeah, he is uh, officially working in the industry now. Uh, let's get into gameplay. Um, mm -hmm. and, and you had put in the notes that it is incredibly similar to Zero Mission. And, uh, I went back to Zero Mission after playing AIM-2R and kind of had trouble readjusting to Zero Mission. Hmm. Like, it definitely feels just, like, responsiveness-wise, the closest to Zero Mission for sure. Because it doesn't yeah. feel like Super Metroid. Like, yeah, it, it feels like fusion. a GBA Metroid. Um, I, I don't know. It kind of feels fusion-y to me. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't I, play Fusion. I will as well say by that, comparison. that Samus is, feels heavier in this than in most of the Metroid games, uh, where um, like when you jump, she seems to come back to the ground a little bit faster than she does in a lot of the other games. I, uh, I'm not disagreeing, but I didn't <laughs> notice that. Okay, <laughs> you know. Um, uh, let's talk pacing. Um, mm -hmm. because the pacing is a little a little weird. Right. Um, I, 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 and a lot of it is is just kind of a byproduct of being a remake of an already kind of poorly paced, weird game in the right. first place. Uh, Metroid Two is is which was also um, a complaint I had with Samus Returns because it was yeah. because it was based on Metroid Two. It ended up having that that weird, super linear, awkward pacing thing. Yeah, it feels it feels kind of strange um the way the environment was for me i mean it certainly it was pretty linear but it never felt linear to me mm -hmm. if that makes sense 
Um, and, and that could just be because I was having a good time exploring the environment and just didn't sure. really pay attention to it. Right. right. Um, but it definitely is, is kind of strangely paced. Like in isolation, it's, it feels a little odd mm-hmm. pacing wise and structure wise, but in, in comparison to Metroid 2, it's, it's certainly better. Oh, yeah. Right. It it is improved compared to the original uh, oh, in every uh, Metroid way. 2, which which really doesn't have any pacing. Metroid 2 is just like it Metroid just speed run the game. Right. Yeah. It's just like do it as fast as you can. Yeah. Um and so I think like if I didn't know this was a remake of Metroid 2, if I didn't know that Metroid 2 existed, yeah. then in my head I might be like, Oh yeah, you can definitely tell it's a fan game because the pacing feels kind of weird. Right. But when taken in in account with original Metroid 2 and Samus Returns, it makes complete sense why it's kind of paced a little strangely. Some right. of the areas feel kind of dense with upgrades. In other areas, it feels like you go a long time with kind of nothing happening. Right. And um, and the the biggest issue that that I have with um, Metroid 2 and its uh, and its remakes two two remakes yeah <laughs> uh, it's it's uh, extrapolation of all the Metroid games to get two remakes yeah right metroid 2 yeah uh and i get why they did it because it needed it the most yeah um but my one of my biggest issues with metroid 2 is because you have to clear so many metroids to open up that next area you have to get all the power-ups in the order they are presented Mm -hmm. like there's a couple that you can theoretically skip or not notice or forget and then you can come back for them later but yeah. you can't get a future upgrade first and then go clear out an earlier area. You have to do them in the order they are presented just by design of the game, uh, which now, which is very un-Metroid for me because I like to do things out of order in Metroid yeah. games. I don't ever do that, so I no. never even would have thought of that. <laughs> yeah. <it's, laughs> I, I, I will say um, there is... Like the worst offender as far as like structure and, and pacing mm-hmm. wise. Yeah. Every now and then you'll be in an area and you have like one Metroid left. And you just can't find it. And right. it's just that kind of like running back and forth in the hallways, yeah. bombing Trying all the walls. Trying to find where that like, door is. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're like, ah, there it is. And it's just it, that can get a little grating. Although I will say it, it didn't bother me as much as some experiences I've had in other Metroid games where I didn't know where to go. At least that tells me like, hey, you need to be in this zone. Right. And you got one more guy to fight. Yeah. You don't know where it is. You can fucking find it still. <laughs> right. Because a lot of times in, in these search action games, I get in the situation where I don't even know which zone I'm supposed to be in. I'm like, I don't know where to go. I, I, I have no idea where I need to be. So at least having that Metroid. And, and so anytime you're in an area, it has a little counter on screen for how many Metroids are left mm-hmm. in that area. Right. So it at least kind of isolates you there where you're like, all right, I, it sucks. I can't figure out where that fight is, but I know it's here. I know it's here somewhere. And when you exit that zone, that counter ticks away and you're like, okay, I know I've left where I need to be. See, I don't, I don't tend to have that issue in, in Metroid games specifically or in I other games. Perpetually. In the genre. Uh, <laughs> so that's, that's not usually my issue uh, so much as I want yeah. to explore. I want to go where I'm not supposed to go. Uh, and this uh, this game and other Metroid 2 games prevent me from doing so, and that's frustrating. Uh, Zero Mission had a good system for that, where it was you you could hit those Chozo statues, and they would light up points on your map. Right. Like, hey, a s- something is yeah, here this for is, you. This is where you should go, but we're not yeah. going to make you. Right. But um, uh, let's get into kind of just general design stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and this is, I, I like this a lot. Th- mm. This game has lots of really tall, I mean, massively tall. Yeah. Kind of, it's got some areas that are so tall that I'm like, am I just infinitely spinning at the top of the screen? <laughs> and then yeah. finally I make it to the top. Yeah, that's that's directly taken from Metroid 2. Just because yeah. uh, uh, Metroid 2, because Samus was so huge on the Game Boy screen for no good mm-hmm. reason, uh, no. it meant that uh, in order to have a room that was large enough, you had to have it like, 10 screens tall and yeah. this game and they, they just directly, translated it. yeah they translated yeah. that whereas directly. whereas samus returns went the opposite direction where they were like oh let's let's rein in some of these super large rooms and turn them into yeah. either multiple rooms or more reasonably sized rooms yeah. this game went the opposite direction where it's just like it was huge in metroid 2 it's huge here <laughs> well what i like about that is these really tall wide open areas means that you you, you get to spend a lot of time using your space jump your right. screw attacks it has really ridiculously long hallways so mm-hmm. you get to do lots of um the the sprint uh 
Yeah, speed the booster. Sprint boots. Speed booster. That's yeah. what I'm trying to think about. There's the, the words. Sprint boots. <laughs> the sprint boots. <laughs> so you, you you know, so you get to use that a lot. And I like that because I feel like um in a lot of Metroid games, uh it it, it feels like, all right, I've got this screw attack, but I'm just kind of using it in these tight corridors and it's not right. fun. I don't get to really go nuts with it, right? That's fair. Um, so I, I liked that. I liked getting to really kind of feel like I got to stretch Samus's legs and really use all of her abilities, um, her abilities for movement and getting around. Um, I, I liked it a lot. I, 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 I could... do like that. One complaint I have with the super big rooms is because, again, I like to try to get off the beaten path whenever I can and right. do something I'm not supposed to do. That means that I was... I was uh, spider ball crawling on the ceiling of every inch of every room <laughs> until I found everything in that room before I would move on to the next room. And well, me, well, uh, and it, it did mean, slow down exploration a little bit in the early game until you get the, the space jump and the, the yeah. screw attack. Then it's fine. I was doing that too. Um, and well, after a point, so I didn't know I had the uh, spider ball until oh. the tower. No, oh. You needed it before that. I did not. <laughs> because I had to go look up a video of someone. Because uh-huh. I got a power up and I you had, you had to spider ball climb your way out of this area. Right. And I was like, how the fuck am I supposed to get out? Uh-huh. And, and the tower's in the last like third of the game right. for people that haven't played. Um, and I go, I have to watch a YouTube video of a guy. And I'm like, how the fuck did he stick to the wall? And I was like, what is that? And you then know, I'm literally just trying every button. And I'm like, oh, my God, I can stick to the wall. I was so thinking I, that <laughs> when I got there, I was because uh, I think I know exactly what room you're talking the about. The energy tank at the top of the tower. Yeah. And yeah. when you get to that, you haven't used the spider ball in forever. Like it was yeah. absolutely necessary. I never used it, it once. OK, well, somehow you never got out of that room where you get it. I, where like, I don't know of another way to get out of that room. I think what happened was I got it and mm-hmm. I thought it was the spring ball. Mm. And then it wasn't the spring ball because you right. get the spring ball later. And yeah. then I, I, I didn't in my head go, OK, well, then what was that? And in my head, I was just like, it's the spring ball. And I was like, oh, I guess you, it's not. How did you get out of the room it's in, though? I, 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 <laughs> I can tell you definitively that I did. Yeah. Well, yeah, I know that. <laughs> because I, I the only reason I know for a fact I didn't know about the spot is because I had to go look it up. I spent like 30 minutes. I almost like re restarted the game. because I was like, mm. I'm stuck. I can't get out <laughs> of this. It was it was an ordeal. Yeah. But, and, but no, what I was thinking was by the time I got to it, I had almost forgotten that the spider ball was even in the game just yeah. because it had been so long since I used it that I was sitting there like, how the fuck do they expect me to do this? And then I'm just like jamming at the controller being pissed. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. I have this spider ball. And then um, I, I think in this, I think is how I got out of the spider ball room is bomb jumping in this game feels dramatically easier than in. Any other Metroid game? Yeah, that is true. Uh, which is nice. Great, I love that. Oh, it's oh, it's so nice. It's, now it's still it's, it's still not just like mash the button and it right. happens. You still kind of got a little bit of timing, a little rhythm, yeah. But it was, but it's an very easy, easy rhythm. And and you could tell that this is the fan game, fan made Metroid game because it's finally the one where bomb jumping is easy. Yeah, obviously the fans have been wanting to bomb jump this whole fucking time, and I don't know why Nintendo keeps making it as hard as it is. I don't know either. And and then I was see, going into this um, before I hit the tower. I was like, man, this game really requires a ton of bomb jumping. <laughs> and I liked that. And then oh. I was like, oh, no, you have the fucking spider ball, Justin. You, you yeah. just didn't know you had it until like the end of the damn game. <laughs> um, so I had and already. The spider ball is what? The third power up you get? I don't have to say how early you get it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, see, um, I, 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 Metroid 2 was one of the first Game Boy games that I had way back in the day, and I played yeah. it a bunch, and I and I could consistently get to the spider ball and the spring ball, and then the rest of the game was just way too hard and confusing to f- navigate my way around, and I rarely ever got past that. Yeah. Uh, so, so the spider ball and Metroid 2 go together in my mind so... Uh, so strongly that uh, <laughs> that to get that far in in AM2R and not have noticed Spider Ball just seemed so weird to me. And I think, and we're gonna get into more of this mm-hmm. later, but I think I'm like secretly really good at the game, <laughs> but I'm just also really incompetent. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll talk you're accidentally fumbling your way into perfection. 
Like, I think I'm really good at the gameplay skills required to play the game, yeah. but I'm also just super dumb. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> anyway. The idiot um, savant at AM2R. <laughs> Uh, as far as upgrades in the game, you got your three suits, power, varia, gravity. Uh, you got um, morph ball, spider ball, spring ball. You got bombs, power grip, which um, you they start with power grip, mission. don't you? Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. you do start it with. Yeah. Which is not, I don't know why Zero Mission doesn't start you with the damn power grip. <laughs> well, it was a new thing um, in Zero Mission. So they had I to know, introduce so, it somehow. Well, cool. Just put it like directly to the left, like <laughs> the morph ball in Metroid 1. And just like, there it is. There's those thing. The morph ball was over there. Well, they could put it next to the morph ball center. <laughs> <laughs> you you got <laughs> I just imagine like Ridley has set up a little table and is like also take me. <laughs> <laughs> you got your uh, high jump, space jump, speed booster, uh, screw attack, right. uh, all your kind of standards. Various beams. Um, the beams you got the charge beam, the wave beam, spacer, plasma, ice. I like all that of all your the beams. Super, uh, beams essentially. Yeah, they all just build on each other. You don't have to do that thing where you have to pick between two of them, (laughs) which is just super annoying to me. Uh, It's just like, hey, your beam got better. Cool. I don't have to worry about like, okay. well, (laughs) And I also love I I cannot stand this. Mm. Um, There's no ice platform enemy jumping. That's true. Yeah. I fucking hate that. It sucks. <laughs> There's none of that. I don't in even fact, think you can. Most fact, enemies, most just when they the freeze, they, they fall. fall. Yeah. yeah. Most of them fall and shatter, which makes more sense. I'll give it yes. that. Uh, but I, I do love ice platforming in Metroid Oh, I, that, oh that, I was, that is one of my longstanding complaints with Metroid <laughs> as a franchise, uh, is I do not like the ice platforming. Oh, it's, I love it. It sucks. Yeah. Um, and then throughout the course of AM2R, just like in Samus Returns, just like in Metroid 2, uh, the whole point of the game is you're hunting 50 or so Metroids. Yeah, you have to take out the entire population, which was 50. <laughs> and they get stronger as you go. You start off with Alpha Metroids, mm-hmm. uh, which are just kind of like regular Metroids, but they're armored up on top. Right. And they got little eyes. Then they're you get bugs. Gamma Metroids, yeah. Zeta, Omega. And then at the very end of the game, you have some kind of standard Metroids. Yeah, you get some, some baby larval Metroids is what they're called. Um, you had a really hard time because the game is effectively like, hey, it's 50 boss battles. That's pretty much what the game is, right? You had a really hard time with multiple of the Metroids. Yeah, uh, like almost all of the Metroids until, until the Omegas and, uh, and the final boss, those I was fine with those. I had almost no problem with, uh, also, uh, Arachnus really, uh, got to me this time and I don't know why. Like Arachnus, I I had to leave and come back to. Yeah. I had to try Arachnus like 20 times to get through him, which is weird because when I first tried AM2R, when it first came out, I had no issues with him. I don't know what changed. I got Um, less competent at video (laughs) games in the last few years. And this is where I, I noticed... Um, a, a pretty distinct because we notice these little differences mm-hmm. between how we enjoy games pretty regularly okay. and we always find it fascinating from right, each right. of our perspectives yeah. because I'm playing the game and I'm having a great time with yeah, it yeah. and you message me and you're like this is so extremely hard that I don't think I can progress right yeah, I, and it, then it feels harder than dread to me it, several of the boss of Cat. which is an asinine statement to me <laughs> you said that to me and I was like is he fucking with me no how on God's green earth is this harder than Dread? I finished um, Dread twice, um, <laughs> uh, 100%. And, uh, and you know, it's, it's, it's tough. It's, it's stupid tough. It's harder than it has any right to be. And the first few Zeta Metroids that you fight in this were way harder than that to me. I don't know and why. This, and this is where we get into kind of the differences between how we enjoy and play games, yeah. which is... And I think this is why you were able to beat Dread, and I was not. Mm-hmm. I'm very, I have horrible timing. Mm-hmm. I am very bad at anything timing based, mm-hmm. rhythm games, memorizing oh. boss patterns. Yeah, I love like, that. I'll, That's I'll my favorite know. part of a game. I, I'll know a boss's tells. I'll yeah. be like, I know when his eyes flash, he's going to do this. Yeah. But I, I don't have good timing. Um, and and so anything timing based is brutally difficult mm. for me. And Dread might as well be a fucking rhythm game with all the timing shit that yeah, it has. That's true, yeah. And this game is very, very much like run and gun Metroid. Mm. Um, there are like the, the the Zeta Metroids don't really have any patterns. Nope. Um, they, and if you they, try they, to they, jump over them, they'll just stay directly underneath you and be like, s- "Fuck it, you're not gonna get to land. Just keep on and, jumping up there." And I like run and gun games i just want to face tank everything um i just want it to be like a slug fest that's what i want every fight to be mm. and am2r delivers that to me 50 times i want to keep my distance 
and take as little damage as possible and uh, and and shoot the weak point for for maximum damage. No, I want to come out the other end with like one HP left <laughs> and one missile and be like, I fucking did it, you know. Um, and this is why I struggle with like Mega Man games so much. I love Mega Man. Because you can't really face tank in Mega Man games. Right. You got you got to figure it out. And I'm like, just like, like, no, I just want to stand there and shoot him faster than he when, shoots me. When I was younger, uh, back when Mega Man 4 came out and uh, we had rented it for the weekend and I was the only one of my friends who realized how easy it was to beat Toad Man without taking any damage at all. Yeah. And that was just the greatest moment of my young life. That's when I yeah. was like, this is what I want every game to be from now on is learning how to fight a boss without taking damage. I can't because I'm not good enough at most games, but yeah. man, do I want that. And what, what I like about the Metroid fights in this one is that I, I still, like every time I lost, I would go back and be like, all right, I'm going to try this strategy. And it wasn't that I was memorizing patterns or timing mm -hmm. windows. I was just coming up with strategies like, all right, what if I'm super mobile and I'm always jumping over him? And trying to say, or what if I just crouch in a corner and just stand there and we see what happens? You know, like just yeah. different strat. And that's what I like in game. Yeah. And I get in, and for you, you're like, I don't want to fucking do that. Give me the fucking timing pattern. Let right. me memorize it and then yeah. do the timing pattern. It frustrated me because I kept trying, uh, even the, the, the basic Metroids and the Alpha Metroids, yeah. I, would, I would go in there and they're only vulnerable underneath, unlike in Metroid 2. So you have to shoot them from underneath. And they would yeah. just flat hug the ground. And I was like, this, what are you doing? And it would just like yeah. ram me while it was on the ground. I was like, you yeah. little asshole. And then I would jump and it would scoot underneath me and See, stay hugging the ground. That's where you dumb fucked up. Because what? when you're on the ground and they're just beating the shit out of you, uh -huh. just don't move. I tried that. And then Eventually they just keep they ramming give up. me. No, see, they weren't giving up for me. They just kept ramming me until I died. I would crouch on the ground. Uh-huh. Angle diagonally yeah. and just literally rapid fire missiles, whether I was pointing at them or right. not. You see, that's what I was trying. And they would just hug the ground and not ever get in the air. And so then I would jump and eventually they would they would lift up a little bit. And you could and, get under them. And I would get under them and then they would immediately like face plant into me and like push themselves under the ground. And I would have to try it like 10 times before I would get lucky enough that they would stay in the air long enough for me to get one hit. And once yeah. I got that one hit, then I could juggle them. But I found it like <laughs> you had messaged me and you're like, I, I can't fight these yeah. fucking things. And at that point I had killed 15 or 16 of them mm -hmm. and I had not died once or even really gotten close to any oh, of man. them. I, and, and it was uh, so we and, and this is when we discovered this whole thing, you know, like we I think we all both already knew this. Like I right. want every game to be Metal Slug. <laughs> right. And so I played AM2R like it was fucking Metal Slug. Right. You had one enemy where you're like, oh, yeah, this flower thing killed me. And I was yeah. like, why would you shoot anything with anything that isn't a missile? It, and you I were like, to save those for bosses. And you're like, I want to save my missiles. And I was like, why? <laughs> like it's the weirdest. <laughs> Like, yeah. I just turned missiles on and just fucking left missiles on the whole game until See, I got to, like, the the later beams. Oh, man. No, I, I use I use my charge beam for everything. No, I, no, I, I use charge beam, like, twice. <laughs> I, <laughs> I just didn't. I was, uh, I just constantly dying until uh, after I got through the tower area. Once I had yeah. gotten through tower the tower. Tower is tough. Uh, tough. I had gotten enough power-ups that the rest of the game was relatively easy for me which which is the the difficulty curve i expect in in uh games of this genre is i expect yeah. as i get more powered up it gets easier but the the beginning of the game felt so brutal to me because of the ai programming for the bosses isn't yeah. a pattern that i can learn no. it is basically <laughs> uh just find their weak spot and hit it and if you can't find and, it and be be and don't get hit yeah. right yeah just just keep on dancing with them until you get there and i'm not i'm not good at that this is and this was my struggle and dread was i was good at playing the game mm -hmm. i could get around quickly i could use all the because i remember even when we were talking about dread mm -hmm. um when i was struggling with it i was talking about strategies and patterns of play that you were like i wasn't even aware of that right um, because they weren't necessary for the timing windows. Right. But I'm over here trying to strategize, but the game doesn't want that. It wants me to insert the key into the lock True. and turn it. It doesn't want me to come up with a, a, a strategy of attack. You know? See, this is, it's, it's funny because I want that exact 
uh, uh, key for attack during combat. And yeah. then when it comes to exploration, I want complete free form. <laughs> complete I'm... freedom. And I want the inverse. Yeah. I don't want to feel lost. Just right. tell me where I need to be. I'll figure <laughs> out. Yeah. I want to get there and I want to do the combat. Right. That's what I'm here for. Let See, me I, shoot want the things. I want to skip the combat and get back to the explorer <laughs> bits. That's where the fun is. Let's talk bosses. Yeah, um, yeah. You have Ancient Guardian early on, which is just kind of like a, a Chozo defense system. And He's I believe he is new to this. Is he? I believe so. Uh, you have Arachnus, who I fought six or seven times, then He's finally left and came bastard. back after I got a couple of energy He's tanks. He's so much I'm, easier in Metroid 2. I will say, I was perpetually two or three energy tanks behind you and then mm. finished the game missing two or three energy tanks just because mm. I was like... Because I remember you're like, I can't... You, when you hit the Zeta Metroids, yeah. you're like, I can't beat these guys. Yeah, I didn't think I was going to get any further. And I, and I was like, I'm beating them and I also have two less energy tanks than you. And yeah. you're like, what the fuck are you even doing? Right? How are you doing this? And I was like, I don't know. I'm stupid and I can't find anything, <laughs> but I can shoot the guys. Yeah, I finally um, lucked out and got a pattern where it just kind of stood there and kept doing the one attack that I could deflect with a missile. And so I just yeah. like jammed wait, 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 missiles wait. You at can it. Def you can deflect miss attacks from the Zeta Metroids with a missile? Yeah, one of his attacks is ground attack that just like is a big claw that comes at you. Oh, if you I didn't realize missiles deflected that. Yeah, if you shoot a missile at it, it deflects it. And so I just was uh, firing through all 200 of my missiles and yeah. enough of them hit it that it died see uh, that's how i played the game yeah. so i usually if i'm shooting at a zeta metroid they're not even on screen i'm like i can't even see them and see, i just fire until they get close enough to me and then if, I if they're off screen i don't seem to be doing anything to them you do there, there's a window right if they're yeah. real far away off screen you don't hit them but right. if they're kind of just a little bit off screen you'll start hitting them yeah see when i was trying that when they were off when they were just barely off screen then they would sprint at me, and I would try to jump over them, and then they would just stay directly underneath me. So That's no matter cool. when I landed, I would take damage, and then they would juggle me into a corner. I don't know what you're doing wrong. I would space yeah, I jump either. out of there. And, and I mean, sometimes I'd still, like, clip on their head or whatever and, and get hurt. But um, Aragnus was a pretty brutal fight. It's pretty yeah. much armored armadillo. Yeah. Um, but, but you have to bounce them into spikes on the ceiling. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you have Terizo, which is stolen from Super Metroid, but uh, yeah, I which think is, is a welcome uh, addition. And Austin, I don't remember in Super Metroid was there the second phase where he grows wings and starts flying? Uh, no, uh, there. Well, yeah, the 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 Super Terizo in Norfair uh, does yeah. fly at some point, if I remember right. Uh, you have Tester, uh, which is just this Maybe big not. orb mm. with plates on it. And this fight took fight. me <laughs> this fight took me the longest time, and here's why. Once you shoot all the plates off with missiles, mm -hmm. you gotta hit them with beam attacks. Right, the I log you, tells you that. I, why would I read a log? Because it I flashed on the screen as soon as the boss started it. I it closed said, that press shit. Start to look at the log, and I hit it, and it said uh, the plates are weak to missiles, but the interior is strong against missiles. And I was like, after oh, okay. I lost like three or four times, I read it. Uh huh. Um, but <laughs> I I don't use beam attacks. Oh, I'm gonna use a missile. Weird. It does more damage. So I'm gonna shoot him with a missile. And so I fought him like two or three times, and I was like, it's like I can get his plates off, but I can't kill him. He's invincible. <laughs> and I, it, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. I, that yeah. was that was a, a a boss. I did get it on the first try, but I was barely alive when I got yeah. it. And that was uh, the the feeling that you were talking about earlier about coming out of there with one HP. I totally yeah. felt that that one fight. I was like, I have no idea how I survived that. I think I just lucked out of it, <laughs> but I am alive now. Uh, you have Ceres, which is pretty much one of the dragons Ceres. from Launch Octopus's uh, <laughs> stage. Do uh, I think I believe uh, Ceres was in Super Metroid. Oh, no, I don't remember. Huh. Yeah, he was much uh, easier there. You have an optional boss fight, Genesis, who is pretty much a Xenomorph. It's pretty much a Xenomorph <laughs> fight. Yeah. And the game makes allusions to it being a Xenomorph fight. Yeah. Um, and But it's it's still legally distinct enough that it feels <laughs> metroid -y. It doesn't feel like some fan game thing they crammed in there. But it's teeny tiny and cute. Yeah. And it I, was a, that I was a fun kinda, battle. I kind of felt bad for him as I was killing him because he kind of looks yeah. adorable because of how teeny look tiny he is. Adorable. Yeah. Uh, you have the tank prototype, which I love that boss fight. I don't even that was fun. That fight it was just stand there and shoot super missiles and don't get hit by I, its missiles. I don't even remember that fight. That's that's like I'm it, staring at your picture of it and I'm like, I must have fought it because I got through the game, but I don't remember it. Uh, the final one is the Queen Metroid. This was the yeah. boss fight I had the most trouble with, except mm. for maybe Arachnus, uh, because this one is a lot of timing. Mm. It's the yeah. kind of the only boss in the game that has a timing sequence but the timing is very similar to the game boy version uh-huh which yeah okay so, so at least i already knew it 
Yeah. Um, so basically, it's it, it's kind of one of those cinematic battles where if you can do timing things, yeah. it's supposed to be pretty easy. Yeah, it was not too bad. It took me, I think, between seven and nine tries uh, uh, the, to fi- finally get it. The thing that, that made up for it for me, because it took me a while to, to get the timing down, uh, is that it constantly shoots these little uh, uh, plague-looking jerks at you. And yeah. you can kill them, and they turn into big health or missile r- yeah. refills. And I was refilling health and missiles so quickly that it didn't even matter that I was taking damage. And I was able yeah. to just rush through the rest of the fight. My timing is so bad that I couldn't heal as fast as I was getting hurt, no. is, is, is what my struggle was. But I think it's a really cool fight. Yeah. Um, she she kind of like uh, busts her way through a bunch of walls. You can kind of fight through the, the lower levels of SR388. And and it's uh it's a it's a fun it's a fun fight it's really cool. Mm. Um, I also love that like right before her zone, there's a quick zip to the distribution center, which is like the quick travel area yeah, yeah. of AM2R, mm-hmm. um, which we didn't really talk about the different right. areas. Um, but the distribution center is is effectively quick travel. You go in right. these tubes and it takes you to different zones, and it's 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 awesome. Because yeah. it means no real backtracking. Right. To which, backtrack to a zone, you just zip there, and then here you are. Which most of the Metroid games have that at the end, True. where there is some uh, uh, fast way to get to all the previous zones. Um, uh, but it was a, a different way to do it, and I liked it. Yeah. Um, However, I would like to say, fuck the little platforms that you have to get into. <laughs> <laughs> because every time They're I would, annoying. Every time I would try to jump on one, Samus would grip onto the ledge above it. The top ledge. And yeah. then it's slightly taller than your spring ball jump. Right. And so, so you can't just spring ball jump in there. So I'd try to drop and grab the, the lower <laughs> ledge so that I could climb in and she would just grab the same ledge again. I'd be yeah. like, God damn it, Samus, what are you doing right now? Um and, and really I, I do like the areas in this game. They're all very distinct from one another. Um, the Golden Temple is really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, the tower, for despite the fact that it's the most difficult portion of the game, by a wide margin, especially that bottom left Zeta Metroid fight with the like bones or spikes everywhere. Oh my god! I say I accidentally saved that one for last, and uh, and by then I had kind of figured out what I was doing. Uh, uh, yeah. But I also saved that one for last, and it took me about a half dozen tries. If I remember right, that one was the one where the door had the little ledge. Yep. And I just hid behind the ledge and shot him from there. Never once occurred to me to hide behind that ledge. I'll tell you what did happen. Mm. Sometimes the Metroid would hit me and bounce me through that hole, a screen over, and and start the battle over. Yeah, I hate that. That was annoying. A couple of bosses did that to me. Yeah. Um... But I, I like the different zones in it. I love the exploration. I love the the fast travel distribution mm-hmm. center. Um, as far as like notable areas and puzzles, mm-hmm. I thought there's a little spider robot puzzle in the middle mm-hmm. of the game where you control a little spider robot trying to deliver super bombs to open up the way. I thought that was really cool. I liked that. I am disappointed that it's only used in that one room. I wanted yeah, it I to like come back later. Yeah. Um, the power plant escape segment in the tower, I thought was mm-hmm. really cool. I mean, it's Metroid. There's got to be an right. escape segment somewhere, yeah. right? Um, yeah, it's weird that it's in the middle of the game, though. It is strange. Yeah. And then, and then after that segment, when I beat the queen, I was like, okay, now the planet's going to blow up. And, and it was just like, okay, you got to leave now. Yeah. I was like, all right, this feels weird. Go ahead and head out. <laughs> it feels Go home now. <laughs> um, but I thought it was a really cool segment. Um, I, I didn't make it out in time. I was literally at the door mm-hmm. to get out. And it exploded and left yeah, me at five health. It's supposed to, yeah. That's is it supposed to? It yeah. seemed it seemed like it was it was intentional. Yeah, because I noticed I I got uh, to the area just outside of that door where I still yeah. had half of the timer left, and then yeah. it just like shot up. Oh, does it? And then it, as soon as you get into that room and into the the blast chamber, it starts going really fast. So I was wondering it's, that. It's very now, I, very designed to do that. I wonder if you can still die earlier if it's just like can, a fake yeah. out timer. Okay. Yeah, so it's not a total just, fake out. It just takes a while to die. Um, there's a lot of story via logs in the game. A lot of a logs. One, I love that that's how they told the story in the game. There's no bullshit. There's no dialogue. There's no talking. It's but, just Samus running but, and gunning. But how will we know what Adam's side of the story is? Oh, no one fucking cares. <laughs> Um, but there is kind of this underlying narrative of, of these, these like, uh, s- Federation so- soldiers had yeah. landed here 
and you're running into their corpses and, and they're like blasted out laboratories where they've been trying to do research. Right. And it just it, it, it adds to the atmosphere. But yeah. then if you want to know the extra shit, there's logs that you can go read. Right. And in this the area where you find their landed ship, there's a ton of logs. Yeah. I didn't read any of them. <laughs> but <laughs> but I read cool all of have. them. It's neat. Uh, most of it doesn't fit into canon at all, which is uh, unfortunate. But yeah. and, and a lot of it is based on information that... Uh, we have since learned is blatantly wrong. So yeah, uh, yeah. But you know that's that's what happens when you make a fan game before the series is over. Yeah. Um, let's talk difficulty, and then we'll get into like kind of direct comparisons before we wrap up. I think we um, talked to difficulty, but we, we did. But we can get back I, into that. I I just want to kind of like in put a bow on it. Mm-hmm. You know, I I found it to be a pretty difficult game. Yeah. Um, I finished it in about six hours. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's largely one that doesn't rely on timing as much as you just brute forcing through battles, which is what I prefer compared to something like dread. It, 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 it just doesn't use pattern memorization and timing windows very often. And so it, it makes it feel very much more fun to me. Right. Um, I, 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 like, I don't know. It's hard. Like difficulty wise, it was really hard, but it was really hard in a way that that I liked playing games. Yeah. You know what I mean? So even when I was losing over and over and over, I still felt compelled to continue playing because the moment to moment gameplay was completely based around just running and gunning shit. There were no Emmy sections. There was no Adam things I had to sit through. There right. was none of this shit. Save points were always very close by to segments that I was dying a lot at. Um, and so I never felt too frustrated, even at the most frustrating moments, right. you know, I, I did feel very frustrated. You did. Oh, you man. were very frustrated. Oh my God. Oh, so you angry. were like, you, you were mad. I was, <laughs> you was, were mad was being mean and unfair. Um, it's so I eventually just had to come to terms with the fact that this is a fan made game. This is not a professional team. They weren't getting paid for it. They didn't have uh, a ton of background in game design. And and that once I finally got that in my head, I cooled down a lot uh, mm-hmm. because uh, I was I was getting so frustrated. Uh, so my my biggest issue with the the difficulty is a lot of the enemy AI doesn't have the kind of forgiveness that I am used to seeing in games. Uh, whereas in in Dread, even though Dread is just ludicrously difficult way more difficult than it really needs to be. It still has forgiveness at times. Like when an enemy hits you, it doesn't stand on top of you and prevent you from getting back up so that it keeps doing damage. It gives you that chance to get away, even if it is a slim chance. And even if it is uh, a chance you don't want to take because it prevents you from doing damage to it, it does give you that chance to avoid taking more damage and because this was uh, a fan-made game by people who, uh, uh, you know, were still learning how to make games, which is great, uh, some of the enemy AI is does not have that forgiveness. It doesn't yeah. know to give you that break. And so you can end up in those situations that I kept ending up in over and over again where I couldn't get away from taking damage and ended up taking uh, a cheap death Uh because of something that was uh, beyond my control. So if you can accept that and and realize that sometimes that's going to happen in this game and you're going to take a cheap death that, that maybe doesn't feel deserved, then the rest of the game is great, but you have to get past that difficulty hurdle, especially in the first half of the game until you get enough power-ups to be able to, to, to just push through any any more cheapness that you might encounter yeah or just get good yeah or get good yeah <laughs> damn it <laughs> um um uh we've mostly covered com- like kind of uh comparisons to metroid 2 and samus returns is there anything else you wanted to touch on as far as like differences uh, yeah just just or similarities r- real real quick um uh the the we we mentioned the 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 gravity suit power grip speed booster charge beam were not in the original game um, yeah, and and a lot of the lore is contradicted by Sam's Returns pretty much directly, and and also although I consider AM two R more canon than Sam's Returns, <laughs> so I'm just gonna put it out there. Well, it's it's not. Um, yeah, well. <laughs> uh, I I do say that uh, the 
the moment to moment gameplay in this, the the that's more run and gun, is way yeah. better than Samus Returns. Just because oh, yeah. uh, oh, yeah. Samus Returns relies so heavily on that parry mechanic that I hate. Yeah. And I'm just going to say this. The last three main Metroid games, mm-hmm. Other M, Samus Returns, and Dread, mm-hmm. have relied on gimmicks. Yeah. And it frustrates me to no end because right. Metroid doesn't need to rely on gimmicks. It's right. a fun idea. It's a fun... I mean, there's an entire genre of games out there <laughs> that just does what Super Metroid did yeah. over and over and over, and people fucking go nuts for right. it. Right. Stop adding these fucking gimmicks to also, the games. Also, somebody in our chat mentioned uh, today about how uh, Metroid used to have that really deep, tense, solitary atmosphere. Yeah. And the newer Metroid games have taken that away in no. favor of uh, having somebody talk at you all the time. Yeah. And AIM2R, I think, is in the spirit of those older yeah. games where where you do feel pretty isolated. Yeah, and a few times you do, the cup, you do run into living humans one other time a second before they're ripped <laughs> to pieces right and and there is uh plenty of text in this game compared to the earliest games yes. but you find it on corpses so it doesn't yeah. even take away from that solitary feeling yeah and and it's it's I, i'm just so sick of nintendo thinking that the, the metroid needs to have a fucking gimmick well you got to have a machine gun that you have to stop moving and then you free uh, aim it well you got to have a parry mechanic we got to have any sections where you run from a robot dog yeah. like i just i don't i, I don't want any of it. that's not right. why i play metroid I play metroid because i like running around shooting aliens fighting big creepy alien bosses yeah and and killing metroids like in collecting power-ups like that's why i'm here it's frustrating why are you adding this other shit the 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 best successor to the early metroid games wasn't made by Nintendo and yeah. the, they took it down in favor of their games, which aren't bad games. Yeah. They're fine games, but they, they take away what, what was so special about Metroid yeah. and Samus returns was me was fine, but yeah. I just honestly got bored with it. I, I, I enjoyed it enough to play through it. I did I not enjoy it enough to play through it again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Let's talk reception. Yeah. Uh, people seem to like this a yeah. lot, uh, like as it. indicated by uh, uh, the fact that the, it keeps getting development. Right. And and also uh, a lot of uh, the, the more mainstream review sites reviewed it, even though it was a fan game, which yeah. doesn't happen typically. And, no. And they generally reviewed it very, very well. So, yeah. Um, let's touch on legacy real quick and then we'll get into final thoughts. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Gwasti, uh, Dr. M64, he was hired by moon studios and he has helped with level design in, uh, Ori and the will of the wisps, which, mm-hmm. uh, I'm not particularly a fan of, but it is incredibly well received and critically acclaimed. So, uh, you know, good on him. I'm glad that he is continuing to get the work because he absolutely deserves it after his yeah. work on this. And, and as uh, far as I know, due to working in the industry has completely washed his hands entirely of this project i, I would believe assume. so yeah i think he just yeah. handed it off to the fan community. i think it, it like, would be career to suicide to even <laughs> acknowledge it at this point well, i think he still acknowledges it but he right doesn't... like as a resume thing right, it's a thing know. i did yes. but as far as like acknowledging that hey it's still going on there's people right, still right. developing it it's, you can still download it it's still right, out right. there yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah he has he has intentionally said no it is not available for download i am not endorsing any further distribution of it yes people who had it can do whatever they want to do with it but i am not involved Mm-hmm. But but no, uh, I'm I'm very happy that he's still uh, working in the industry, and uh, and of course also as far as legacy of this goes, uh, uh, Sam's returns happened, um, though <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it, sadly at the expense of this, um, and then then also uh, Metroid Dread, which has gone on to be the highest grossing game in the series history. So mm. uh, despite complaints that I have with Dread, it grumpy has... noises. <laughs> It has uh, spurred interest in the franchise, and that yeah. is good. I am happy about that. Uh, I am curious if Nintendo is even pulling data from uh, uh, Super NES Online to see if people are playing Super Metroid. Nintendo I doesn't know what the fuck data is. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised it's Nintendo. at all if all the companies out there that mine every single inch of data that any of us give to the internet, I would not at all be surprised if Nintendo never even considered that when making NSO. Yeah. Um, but, but hopefully they are, hopefully they are getting that data and seeing if people are playing the older games and taking that seriously, but I really doubt it. Yeah. Um, let's talk final thoughts. Mm -hmm. Uh, at, as, as a fan game. Yes. AM2R is an absolute triumph. Absolutely. 
uh, if I didn't know that it wasn't put out by Nintendo, mm-hmm. like if you just hand it to me blind in a vacuum, then I wouldn't have even considered that it was a fan game in my playtime with it. You- now I might have considered, hey, this is kind of odd, or you know, hey, Nintendo doesn't usually remake things so literally like this. <laughs> or Nintendo but, doesn't normally make native PC games that use Xbox right. prompts. But but all of those you know <laughs> obvious tells. Away, just as far as the gameplay yeah. and and how the game is presented, I, I never would have, I never would have guessed. It, it's it's just, and if you've never played a fan game, go play some fan games because man, they're uh, <laughs> questionable. They're questionable. they're a little rough sometimes. Yeah. Even the really acclaimed ones sometimes. Because I I I left AM two R. And I was on this like fan game high where I'm like, I should play more of these fan games. So many cool fan games out there. And I went and I played one and I was like, oh, no, like it's immediately very rough edges, you know. Um, So just as a fan game, as a fan game project, what a triumph. Uh, It is such a polished, small, great package. It's compatible. It's literally just a fucking executable that runs. (laughs) There's no install. It's so nice. To have this, um, I, I I do think um, it's it's tough. Um, yeah. But the the few small design tweaks or kind of adaptations r- f- from the source material uh, really make it a super enjoyable experience for me. Mm-hmm. I would rank it well above Samus Returns. Yeah, me too. Um, I would rank it well above Metroid Dread. Mm. And I, I feel like if I were to put it somewhere in the Metroid pantheon, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like it's up there with the GBA games for me. It's ma- it's it's maybe it's behind Zero Mission, and maybe kind of like right on the tail or right next to Fusion. And I only say that because I haven't played Fusion in a while. I remember not super enjoying it, so I suspect I might like this better than Fusion. Hmm. Um, but I'm just kind of giving myself some breathing room uh, because it's been a while since I played Fusion. So a uh, really really awesome Metroid game. In my opinion, I would put it about on par with Dread for me. It's definitely ahead of Samus Returns, and more importantly, it's so far ahead of Metroid Two. And yeah. that's the important part that you need to take out of it is if you are wanting to play through the Metroid franchise, um, skip Metroid One, just play Zero Mission instead, and also skip Metroid Two and play this. Uh, it is it is that good of a uh, reimagining of Metroid Two that I wouldn't even consider recommending metroid 2 to somebody yeah um, i i will except s- for like historical purposes right, right. i guess Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah yeah and also if you just want to see the tallest sprites you can see on an original game boy yeah. um but i i would slightly disagree with you as far as um uh, uh fan game quality which again as i was saying earlier it feels like a fan game to me in AI design, enemy AI design. Mm -hmm. Uh, And uh, like we had mentioned earlier, there are a couple times where the animation gets a little wonky, uh, but you have to be looking for it. Um, Honestly, and and I do think the only reason I don't have that disagree or or that issue with the AI design is Mm. I feel like they designed it in a way that I prefer (laughs) to the way Nintendo has been designing shit lately, which is just sheerly preference. Even, even uh, compared to uh, Super Metroid and Metroid 2, I would say that the enemy design is uh, the enemy AI design is a little weaker than those mm-hmm. games. However, yeah. uh, when compared to just any random indie game on the market, and certainly when compared to most fan games that you can find, this is so above and beyond most of them. Yeah, and and a lot of that is because it is taking from that game design from uh, Metroid 2, from Super Metroid, from Zero Mission. Uh, right. that makes and, it, and it's so much better of a game. It's also a, a over a decade of now active development. True. You know? Yeah, so. absolutely. Um, uh, and and at this point, it is it is a six-year-old game, and I say it still stands up to most indie games you see today. Certainly most indie search action games that, uh, admittedly, you know, there are some great ones out there, but some of them kind of phone it in. Um, yeah. And, and this doesn't. It even even though they had some level design to start from pulling from Metroid two, there are plenty of very smart redesigns. I mean, the, the speed booster wasn't even in the original game and there are some really smart speed booster puzzles in this one. Um, uh, I will, uh, give a mild complaint that, 
uh, all of the Shine Spark puzzles in this to get optional power ups are so much easier than any of the ones in Zero Mission or uh, I like Sam's that. Returns. I have a hard time with those. Oh, I love those. Those are some <laughs> of my favorite parts of Metroid <laughs> games. Anytime you can give me uh, a really difficult challenge that has no enemies or combat involved, I'm so in on that. Yeah. Uh, but no, uh, uh, the, those are pretty easy, which which I'm going to give it a slight slap on the wrist because I want some more harder Shine Spark challenges. But yeah. other than that, it's uh, a lot of fun, really well made, and definitely worth checking out. Well, if you would like to lodge a minor complaint, then you can do so <laughs> at patreon.com slash retro warriors. Where you can also get things like Talking Wizards, which uh-huh. is just dumb. Yeah. Uh, you can get uncut versions of this show, which is also kind of dumb. Just dumb, yeah. Um, it's just, if you like dumb stuff. <laughs> <laughs> if you wanted this but dumber. <laughs> we have many hours of it available <laughs> at patreon.com slash retro warriors. Uh, and we want to thank the following patrons for their kind contributions, starting with Joe Frankum. Believe it or not, I'm walking on air. I never thought I could feel so free. Flying away on a wing and a prayer. Who could it be? Bel- Alcoholics Anonymous. <laughs> I like that you jumped in to preemptively cut it off. Uh, Brian Kim. If you enjoyed this podcast and would like to support us, head over to <laughs> patreon.com slash retro nuts. What? Who the fuck put this in here? Beautiful. Uh, Captain Koloth. That's not who put it in there. That's a second name. It's a, an unrelated name. Logan Sharp. I'm not pointing blame. Uh, sponsored by Honest Bob's Dildo and Butt Plug Emporium. William Owens. We're more, more, more okay with sponsoring Honest Bob's Dildo and Butt Plug Emporium than we are with that other one. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay with that. All right. Uh, Retro Game <laughs> Club Podcast. And Mark Bowler are all the people we want to thank for um, making us read these things this week. Um, <laughs> and we want to thank you for listening. And we'll be back next week with some more stuff yes. and some things. Indeed. Anyway, uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs> and as always, <laughs> do you forget how to us? end the show no, for I, a second? I got thing? it. We're going to do it. We got it. Thanks yeah. for listening. And as always, let, let us, us cling, cling together. together.